What a disastrous day in the stock market today, guys. It was one of those days we started off the day green. It was looking all good in the morning. Then all of a sudden, I think about 11 a.m., 12 p.m. here on the East Coast, the markets completely started to collapse. So we have to break them down in this video. We're going to go over charts, stocks that I'm looking at, what I'm looking to do in the market. So sit back, relax, take a sip of your coffee. Yes, this is actually my second double espresso of the day. And uh, that's when you know the markets are collapsing when you're on to your second double espresso at about uh, 5 p.m. Maybe you guys do more than that. But to me, that's, uh, that's a decent amount of coffee per day. So we're going to break down a lot in this video and let's just dive into it. So we had the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones each closed down over 1% on the day. We had the Russell down 0.7 as the NASDAQ 100 did the worst. Triple Q collapsed today. It went down 1.4%. On the day, and funny enough, the VIX only went, or not even only, it went down on the day. It went down about 0.3 percent on a day where you would think the VIX is going bananas. And we had uh, crypto. Let's see here. I'm pulling it up on my phone. Crypto is currently at uh, Bitcoin is rather uh, at 19,900. It's down half a percent on the day. As Ethereum's down 0.9 percent on the day at about 1560. And the entire market, I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Let me double check. But the entire crypto market right now is down about 0.6%. So it's a red day. It was a red day all across the board. And, and I think the metals, yeah, of course. I mean, actually, no, gold's up on the day. Uh, and sa same with silver. So it looks like everything, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, I'm choking here. Everything but the uh, the metals went down on the day. And you can see here, we tried consolidating on SPY. And this is the intraday chart, by the way. Let me actually get some coffee very quickly, guys. Cheers. What we're noticing right here, this is the intraday chart. And SPY went down from about noon. Like I said, it was at 402, went down to about 392. And <clears throat> we tried consolidating at about 392, 393. That was uh, from about 2 p.m. to about 3.15 p.m. on the East Coast. And where the bears really came in to take this thing for another ride was in the middle of power hour. In the middle of power hour, SPY went from 393 down to 390. So it collapsed another three quarters of a percent. And then we got a bit of a relief rally heading into close. So that goes to show heading into the long weekend, guys, we already collapsed from noon to 2 p.m. We also collapsed in power hour. The bears are clearly gaining momentum here. And I do believe we actually took the lows out from a couple of days ago. Actually, no, we didn't. That's, I guess that's a good sign for the bulls. But then again, the bulls are holding on by a thread. I mean, I think we're going to break 390 at some point, which is where SPY held yesterday. And clearly we held it today and we closed above it. So, <clears throat> so for next week, if 390 breaks on SPY, we're probably going to start going to about 380, 381. That's the next main support here that I have outlined. And if that ends up breaking, oh, golly, it's going to be going down probably to about 362 to, uh, to between 370. We shall see, guys. And for Triple Q, let's pull this up. Did this take the lows out? It might have took the lows out. Actually, it looks like it didn't. And by the lows, I mean the lows from yesterday. Yesterday, we hit 292. Roughly 293. I mean, it was 292.95. It pretty much was 293. And today we hit that same level and we bounced and we ended up closing at about 295. So there, you know, there is hope for the bulls here. They're hanging on by a thread, but I have a feeling my spidey senses are tingling, guys. I feel like um, we're going to go down to 285 on Triple Q. I think 292 is not going to hold. We're going to break 290. And we're going to get another leg down. Who knows? I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But based on what I'm looking at here on the charts, and granted, we have a long weekend. We have Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Who knows? We might get a piece of news over the weekend. Who the heck knows? In this market, anything could happen. And long weekends, they're uh, they're prone to uh, you know some bad news. We shall see, guys. So overall, what do you think? Let me know your thoughts 
in the comments down below. Hit that like button. And if you haven't gotten your free stocks for Moomoo yet, what are you doing? Use that link down below or go to stocksurfest.com slash Moomoo. All you have to do is deposit at least 100 bucks, and you get up to 13 free stocks, each up to 2000 bucks. And you could also get 12 stocks from Weeble with any amount deposited. And guess what? I started a second channel for or almost five years after starting this channel, guys. Yes, it's been that long. It's been years, guys. I started another channel called Stas Talks Money. And we're going to talk on that channel mostly about personal finance, general investing topics, probably a little bit about the stock market here and there, but it's going to be mostly a general finance channel. This channel here is going to stay the same. We're talking about stocks charts, all that good stuff. We're going to be niched down to the stock market on this channel, but on that channel, Stocks Talks Money, it's going to be mostly personal finance, money topics. We're going to get into some controversial topic uh, topics as well. So if you guys do want to subscribe to that, it's linked right down below. Check it out. You guys won't regret it. I already have a video up there. It's a short video. It's uh, about almost two minutes long. So if you guys go want to check out or you want to check out the channel, Linked down below, Stas Talks Money. I appreciate you all, as always, for all the support, all that good stuff. Without you all, this would not be possible. I've said that time and time again. So let's talk about now some stocks that I have. I'm going to pull them up on my phone because my iPad, uh, my fiance is actually using my iPad. She does a lot of, um, you know, like design work. She's doing a bunch of DIY projects right now. She has she uses the iPad to like design on or I don't even know what she does. It's complicated crap. And then she has this thing called uh, a cricket or a cricket. Uh, you guys probably know what that is. Some of you all. I'm not artsy at all. If you guys haven't uh, realized that I'm the least artsy person, but that's what she's using the iPad for. So I'm going to have the phone for this video. So <laughs> the first stock I want to go over is Win Resorts, guys. Ticker symbol W W Y N N. If you take a look here. We have an inverse head and shoulders, right? We have the left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and look at where we are today. As of today, we closed right at the uh, the neckline of the inverse head and shoulders. If we do end up getting buying pressure at this point on winter resource, which who the heck knows, we haven't gotten that yet. But if we do at some point next week, we might be in due, or, uh, due rather, for a rally maybe towards the mid-60s to 70. Uh, especially if it starts breaking out of these moving averages. So it's not confirming the bounce yet. Quite frankly, it's under 60 bucks. You know, we might we might get a death cross. We might not even bounce at this point. But I'm going to put my alert anyway at 63 bucks. Mark is at or above. If we start showing signs mid 60s, there's going to be more upside in my opinion and that right shoulder could complete anywhere from 70, 75 bucks a share. We shall see, guys. Let's not get too ahead of uh, ahead of ourselves. Uh, we have to wait and see what the price action looks like. And again, if this breaks the neckline, which is it's at now, 58, 50, 59 bucks. If we clearly break under there towards the low 50s, you know that's going to be out the window. You know, at that point, we're probably going to continue the downtrend, and uh, the inverse head and shoulders would be out the window. So, win resorts. You got to watch it. Ticker symbol W-Y-N-N. What else do we have here? XLE, guys. Look at XLE. Energy stocks have not been doing well recently, especially the past couple of days. XLE, well, I guess today it did well. It had a 1.8% green day. Nice bounce back day for XLE. But overall for this energy ETF, it has not been good. You know, just a couple of days ago, it was at 85 bucks. Now it's at 80. It's down about 6%. So not a, not a ton. It's not the end of the world. But from where it was a couple of weeks ago, two, three months ago, it's down about 14%. Uh, but, but honestly, I think this could be a dip by opportunity considering today, again, we had a 1.8% green day in the midst of a red day overall. We're starting to see buyers come in here on the four-hour chart at about the 180 SMA. You guys notice how this ended up holding a higher low. You guys see that boom, the first low, second low. Well, actually, this is the first low here back in the middle of July, second low early August. Just now we hit another potential low, um, you know, at... Well, I guess it is a low already, but we're not sure yet if it's going to start breaking out fully because we're not quite yet out of the highs from just two days ago and the 50 SMA resistance here on the four hours. So it's starting to show signs of a break, you know, starting to see buying pressure come in, but we're not getting the full break yet. 
So for that reason, I'm going to set my alert at 8150 and we're going to watch it from there, guys. Patience is key in the stock market, as I'm sure a lot of you have learned that. Maybe the hard way. Maybe the hard way. I for sure learned that the hard way um, you know, years ago. And even now, I struggle with patience sometimes. Everybody does. We're all human, right, guys? So the next one is Vici Properties, which is one that I own. I've owned it for the entirety of this year. This is one that I bought in the beginning of 2022 when... I started my REIT portfolio, Real Estate Investment Trust portfolio, which I mentioned in my video earlier today. I ended up, not, well, not not like I ended up like I finished the portfolio or anything like that. But as of now, that portfolio is beating the other portfolios, really my other long-term account. It's beating it. You know, it's beating the S&P 500 as well, which is always great. Now, sure, it's only a year that it's doing that. Will it do that in five, 10 years from now? I have no idea. But as of now, since the beginning of this year, Vici, Stag, which is another one that I own, which I bought more of yesterday, and Realty Income, ticker symbol O, oh, these three alone for me from when I bought them in the beginning of this year, they have beaten the stock market. And you guys can go and look at the returns for yourself. I mean, I'm not BSing you guys. Um, it's crazy. So Vici at this point has come down. And mind you, I'm still up, not not to brag, but I'm still up a lot of my investment here on VG and I've been collecting the dividends. But in the past couple of days, really the past week or two, it is down 9%. It went from 35 bucks. Now it's at about 32. Again, 9% drop. And we do have a bit of a head and shoulders. I mean, that is a concern here in the short term. Uh, you know, who knows if, if it's completed yet or not. Maybe it still has some more juice on that right shoulder, uh, shoulder to the downside. But as of now, Vici is holding the 180 SMA. Barely, but it's holding, which you guys can see technically as well. We are at a higher low and the uptrend is still holding. So now we're at, you know, oversold territory, I'd argue. Maybe we do go a little bit lower for sure. That's possible. But I feel like here in the low 30s, buyers could definitely come in on uh, on Vici. Maybe, maybe again, it goes a little lower, whether it's at $30.50, 31 $31.50. I don't know. Uh, I think buyers will come in. We shall see. I could be wrong. I've been wrong in the past, but Vici's definitely one that I'm looking at. And I'm, I'm personally probably not going to buy more of it in my long-term REIT account. Maybe I will if it gets down to the low mid or more like mid-20s again. Uh, but at this point, I'm mostly looking at it as a trade. You know, if it were to come down to 31, 30, even here at 32, buyers start coming in. So keep your eyes out on Vici. Let's see what else I got going here, guys. Make sure to smash that like button if you haven't done so already. And make sure to subscribe. I don't know what you guys are doing if you haven't subscribed yet. What are you doing? And let me actually get some coffee. Cheers to that, guys. <clears throat> so what else do we got? Lowe's. LOW. This is another one that I covered a couple of days ago, and I'm still watching it. Today, we had a red day, as you guys know from the beginning of this video. We covered it, and Lowe's did not do that bad. It actually held up pretty nicely in the mid-190s. So right now, we're not quite yet breaking out on Lowe's to either direction, right? We're not breaking to the upside, down to the downside. We're just consolidating in the mid-190s, uh, right above the 180 SMA here on the four-hour time frame, which I guess is good. And I have my alert set at 200 for this week. If we do break 200, that's the uh, point where I think a big reversal to the upside could be coming. We could be going to uh, 210, 11, uh, 215, maybe pushing 220. So I think Lowe's is poised for a breakout. Granted, if the markets continue collapsing, that's going to go out the window. But Lowe's, it's, it's pretty oversold. We're right by the moving averages. We're getting that consolidation. I think we're going to... Uh, if we, if we break 200, I think it's off to the races for uh, for lows. So let's see the next one here, ENPH. Let's pull it up. End phase is consolidating, guys. This is one that I think, even though it's ran up a ton this year, I think throughout the course of 2022, end phase is up roughly. Let's do a rough return check here. Holy smokes. It is up 150%. Uh, in this year, it started off the year early January at about 150 bucks a share. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Yeah, more like, <clears throat> more like, um, yeah, not 150 percent. No, I'm wrong on that, guys. More like 80 percent. All right, a little bit, a lot less than 150 percent, but still, 
80% return since the beginning of January. And from the low, $113 low to where it is now, maybe that's 150%. Yeah, that's an 150% return from $113 to where it is right now at $280. And even though it's gone up so much, I feel like technically this still looks very bullish. Do you not see it, guys? I mean, it's been consolidating for a couple of weeks after a very good earnings report and a very good run-up. The fact that it's pretty much held that entire run-up after the earnings, it's not like we've lost that entire gain. We're still up a good amount from the earnings. We're still up 30%. That's a very good sign for uh, Enphase. That's a very bullish sign for Enphase, considering the entire market in just the past couple of days. Let's pull up Triple Q real quick. Just in the past couple of days, Triple Q is down. Forget the past couple of days. Let's just look at the past two weeks. It is down 12%. And I think Enphase... I don't even think Enphase is down 12% in the past two weeks. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, it's not, guys. Holy crap. Look at that. Enphase is down 8 or 9%. Yeah, roughly 8, 9% in the past couple of, in, in the past two weeks as Triple Q is down 12%. So it's holding up very strongly against the markets here, which, again, that's a great sign. So I feel like we just have to wait for a break on this 20-day chart. You guys notice here on this 20-day that if I pull up the channel tool, you guys see that? Boom, we're in this channel, downwards channel, and we haven't broken out of it yet, clearly. But if we start breaking, I'd, I'd say uh, about 285, 290 to the upside, there's going to be a big reversal, breakout, continuation, if you will, on end phase. At least I think there will be. Of course, I could be wrong. Make sure to do your research as always, guys. But that's just my opinion. Let's see another one that I'm looking at here, which is Netflix. Netflix, I talked about yesterday, I believe, or maybe two days ago, uh, how I am a little bit nervous about it here on the four hour time frame because it really hasn't fully breaking out quite yet. It's still trading within this gap, uh, the down gap that it made after two earnings ago where it just completely collapsed. So that's a little bit nerve wracking. But in the very short term, if we pull up the 90 day chart, you guys can see we're trying to, uh, well, we have been consolidating the past two, three ish or more like two weeks consolidating at about 220, 225. We're trying to uh, now potentially break. That's kind of what I'm waiting for. Are we going to break out of this roughly 235 resistance, which has been resistance the past couple of weeks, two weeks roughly, like I said. Um, if this point breaks, 235, I mean, does this not look like it wants to go straight to the highs from a, a couple of weeks ago? 250, 55, I mean, this is probably going to start gunning for um, the 250s again. Maybe even higher than that, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. But overall, that's kind of what I'm seeing here on... Um, on Netflix. So that's pretty much it, guys. Those are six stocks. I think Coinbase was another one. Yeah, this is one that you got to watch as well. Although Coinbase is down massively over the past couple of weeks, it is down literally, guys, 50%. It, I mean, you can't make this up. Stocks could get cut in half. In this environment, stocks can get cut in half in a couple of weeks. It literally just happened. Coinbase was 120 bucks. Now it's in the 60s. This stuff is scary, but right now, maybe a lot of the weak hands were kicked out. You know, all those speculative buyers that were bidding it up back in the beginning of August. What what news did we get back then? Some news about was it a bank? They're 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 partnering up with a bank or something like that. I forget what bank it was. A lot of that came out. A lot of people got smoked, toasted. They lost a lot of money. Now I feel like we could be getting ready for another uh, round here. You know, we're at the bottom here of this uh, this wedge. We're pretty oversold. We're, we have a bit of a bullish divergence as well here on the four-hour time frame. You guys see that? So I think Coinbase, I have my alert at 72. If we start getting out of there, get ready for another big move, potentially. I mean, this could get hot and go back to the 90s, 80s, 90s, maybe towards 100. Just like that. We've seen it do it time and time Again, so with that being said, guys, I'm going to wrap the video up. If you all enjoyed it, hit that like button, subscribe, get your free money for Moo Moo, 13 free stocks, each up to 25 or 2,000 rather, still a lot of money. Each of those, again, 2,000, all you got to do is deposit at least 100 bucks onto Moo Moo. Again, link down below, and you could also get 12 stocks from Weeble with any amount deposited, free stocks, guys. And do not forget to join, or not join, but subscribe the new to the new channel, Stocks Talks Money. That's linked down below. Again, personal finance you know, content, 
money content, general finance, all that good stuff is what's going to be talked about on that channel. And I do have a video out on it already. So subscribe, link down below. Again, it's called Stas Talks Money. I'll see you there in that channel, and I'll see you on this channel in the next video, guys. Peace out.